I don't have a dumb phone. I have a smartphone and a doom phone. My phone is terrible. I have a secondary phone that is completely dedicated to everything I hate about the internet, but I can't quite get away from. If you're the type of person that pays a lot of attention to trends online, you may have noticed that people started carrying dumb phones. Everyone says, you know what? These smartphones, there's just too much happening on them. I feel overwhelmed. I feel like I don't have the ability to prevent myself from scrolling on social media. And I respect that. I have a great deal of respect for that. I've decided to take the opposite approach. This phone here promises to distract me forever, but I don't keep it on me. Whereas my personal phone, I keep this on me and I use it every day and I have very little social media on here. This gives me the ability to focus in on the things that I care about, work, and be the power user that I always dreamed I would be with a smartphone. And then, when I actually want to waste time, I go to this one. And I'm going to show you how and why I'm doing this. There are going to be a few things that you noticed first. One, this phone is the smaller iPhone 12 mini. And the reason I have it is because it was just a phone that no one was using in the family anymore. I have a handful of them, but it's the smallest one. It's the least invasive. I figured I would use this as the Doom phone. Inside, I have social media. The only thing that I really care about doing here. The nice thing about it being an iPhone is that I can still airdrop to it, which I find to be very beneficial if I'm posting on social media. I also have a screen time reminder right at the top. I keep myself uh, very aware of how much time I'm spending on this, and every single one of these apps has one of those 20-minute app limit warnings. And I do that just because I want to make sure I don't get sucked into this device. On top of that, I've also turned color filters on. So the colors are actually very muted. I don't do fully black and white because sometimes if it's completely black and white, I have a difficult time differentiating between some of the different colors. Uh, so I keep it to like 75 to 80% black and white, and just to let a little color come through, uh, that helps me still differentiate between things. At the same time, I also have a matte screen protector on here. And I have the matte screen protector because it's a little annoying to look at, and mostly makes it feel kind of like paper. It makes it just less juicy feeling. And I think when something feels like really bright and vivid, we don't want to look, look away from it. It's the same reason you have really bright colors in kids' television, because it just makes them stare at all the vivid colors. Uh, we're just training people at a very young age to get sucked into something. And by using the muted tones and the matte screen protector, I find that I'm less drawn to the content. Even when I'm scrolling through TikTok, things are still not nearly as captivating. And for me, that is so much better. I find myself able to actually function and get away from it because it doesn't actually suck me in. At the same time, my main phone is set up primarily for productivity. I have one sort of exploratory app on here, which is Cosmos, which is similar to Pinterest, but isn't bombarded with ads. I use Cosmos mostly as a source of inspiration, something to get me back into uh, what I'm doing. And every app on here has some sort of like function utility use. Dazcam is one of my favorite film simulator apps. Um, the Pocket app is basically Procreate for your phone, and it works really well for me just jotting down ideas. Ico is a whisper transcription app, and I have a whole video about how obsessed I am with transcription. And ChatGPT, obviously no need to explain there. A couple of other messaging tools, a few notifications from Discord. I use Discord for a lot of my work projects, so Discord sort of functions like Slack for me. Um, and honestly, this, this folder never gets too overwhelming. The only thing that drives me crazy is Gmail, but I can't get away from that one quite yet. Utilities, uh, that mostly just follows under important things that I'm using. And over here, I have a bunch of other uh, utility-focused tools, things that I use to control um, different functions and shortcuts. The two social apps that I have on my main phone are YouTube, because I listen to a lot of music and podcasts there, and also Facebook. And I don't use Facebook for anything at all except Facebook Marketplace. And to be honest, I typically scroll through Facebook Marketplace for about 10 minutes a day. This down here is my Notes app, and I just use the normal Apple Notes app. But one of the things that I do is I have a shortcut set up that automatically pulls up a new daily note. Now, the benefit of that is that every single day I have a fresh note, and I can immediately just add information to the end of it. My Action button also goes directly to my Notes. So I can just say anything I want here, 
and it's immediately transcribed to the end of that note meaning I don't even have to write in that note, but I still have record of some of the things that I was working on. Anyway, the Doom phone, I think, is something that people should be more interested in using. It is the same thing as having a dumb phone and having a smartphone, except in this way, I have all the benefits of having a normal smartphone. And I also have all the benefits of having a social media device. Being the type of person who posts online, I don't really have a way to escape it. I need to post content, that's kind of part of how it works, and this phone helps me do that. Now if I really want to, I can record something on my main phone and then send it here. That makes it far easier. The other thing that I do have to get away, this is sort of unrelated, but I have a Books Tab Mini, but this is an Android tablet that has an e-paper screen, and it doesn't have a backlight unless I really want it, I can read it in broad daylight. And I do use this for some productivity tasks just to get away from having to use something like this. I also have social media on this as well. And um, to be honest, it's very annoying to use scrolling through social media, so I really don't want to. And by making my social media experience worse on my end, I actually find that I have a little bit more freedom in the times where I don't have the most self-control. And by preparing myself for the times when I have the least amount of self-control, I find that I'm able to get through the day more effectively and spend my time doing things that are more productive. I've also gotten the habit of moving my phone away from me while I'm working. So if I'm working, even my really good phone, I throw it in my bag just to make sure I don't have anything on my desk. I'll also make another video about this book's tablet because I do think there are some really interesting insights here compared to my other favorite tool, which is an iPad mini. Long story short, I think everybody in the world should probably have a smartphone. They are that useful. They do make your world so much more um, expansive, and they provide so much utility. Obviously, there are things on these devices that can entrap you, just like in the real world. And at least for me, I found a dumb phone was not the way to go. But a doom phone, or the ultimate path to destruction, did help. I could separate all of the most addictive parts and put it into a little box that I don't really want to use so that my primary box is something much healthier for me.